Today we are going to discuss about tourism and infrastructure. So the objective of this particular video is that we'll define infrastructure, what is the meaning of infrastructure, then understand its importance in the quality management and the sale of a quality product like tourism. Now the various aspects that we shall be covering over here is that tourism has been restricted to certain small sectors of the market because the large scale movement of tourists has turned towards the supply in greater quantities and at lower prices of tourist services and products. So people today want more and more of travel but at less and lesser of prices. Mass tourism is characterized by its willingness to forego quality in the interest of affordability. So nowadays there is a lot of mass tourism to a particular place. More and more people are going to a particular place wherein it creates a lot of pressure on the infrastructure of that particular place and of course this forgoes the interest of quality in terms of quantity people want more and more places to visit they want affordable places to go and irrespective of the quality of the infrastructure that is provided to them now two interesting contradictions emerge when we take on the issue of infrastructure number one tourism expands the space of the tourists and brings into its orbit destinations which may be economically socially and culturally different to the tourist home environment. The basic definition of tourism says so that we move away from our native place of residence or usual place of residence. So that is why tourism expands and brings into orbit the destination which may not be the place where we live which are different from the tourist home environment. Number two, tourism makes people change their daily routine by taking them away from home and yet they want to retain their environmental bubble by patronizing an international airline or say an international tour operator or international chain of hotels. Basically we move away to a particular destination but we want the homely environment to be there along with. Now one solution to this contradiction is for the state to show foresight and plan tourism development so that tourism infrastructure and services will not produce results which hamper the residents from meeting their basic needs and yet achieve the objective of income, employment and development. Now if we see the three basic components of tourism are the three A's, attraction, then accessibility and then accommodation and the fourth is added upon our amenities. Now if we have a closer look at all these four A's, it is always related to infrastructure whether it is accommodation or it is accessibility or the amenities or for that matter the attraction. The attraction becomes a complete attraction only and only if there is adequate infrastructure to attract the tourists. Now tourist needs to be understood and supervised if it is not to become a danger to the community. Now tourism kills tourism is a famous saying in our academic world. So over tourism is going to kill a destination in the long run. So we need to understand the requirements of tourism and we need to supervise tourism so that it does not become a danger to the local community. Hence, tourism should include construction of a model to see the interrelationship between tourism and other activities. Number two, promotion of beneficial effects of holidays with the domestic tourists. Number three, subsidy for tourism for workers and other less favored sectors to win their approval for tourism. This takes a lot of analysis of the role of tourism in the national economy. Today we see that tourism has contributed almost 1,90,000 crores of foreign exchange to the national economy. This is only from the foreign tourists coming to India that is inbound tourism and the amount of money that is spent by the domestic tourism all across the country is immense and unmeasurable. Secondly, the legislation for establishing an adequate framework for all possible aspects of tourism activity. Thirdly, provision of protection to tourists so that they may enjoy tourism under the best conditions. Hence, we have various schemes like tourist police and all, wherein we try to give the tourists the best possible experience. Then protection of the rights of individuals and communities at the destination and their share in the benefits. It should always be that the local community benefits the greatest from the tourism infrastructure development and not the outsiders who come and spend money and invest money in that particular area. All these above mentioned aspects have an important relationship with infrastructure in the tourism business. Tourism business and infrastructure go hand in hand and if you don't develop infrastructure at a particular place, it can never become a tourist spot. Now coming to the question, what is infrastructure? So we have various definitions of infrastructure. The textbook definition of infrastructure is that located below the ground to complement which lies above the ground. 
In case of tourism supply, this definition is very limited because the tourist product is very very complex without boundaries and spills over the globe and is not put together in a factory. So it's very difficult to define infrastructure from tourism perspective because whatever infrastructure we develop for tourism aspect is used by the local population the most. So it's a very very complex scenario where we cannot say that this is the infrastructure which is meant only and only for tourists. The first aspect of infrastructure is freedom to travel. Infrastructure is not only brick and mortar structures, it is much beyond that. The first aspect of infrastructure is freedom to travel, that is freedom to access to a particular destination. Now this involves international relationships, congenial relationship between two countries so that people from one country can travel to the other country, worldwide agreements, international policies, friendly relations and hostilities. For example, for freedom of access of tourists coming to India, the government of India now has a scheme called Visa on Arrival or it is also known as ETV that is Electronic Tourist Visa on Arrival. Now we have extended this Electronic Tourist Visa on Arrival to 168 countries. So people from 168 countries can log in into our website, they can fill up a form and that form will generate a, a document which they have to bring into India before landing. They just have to take a printout of that particular document which they have filled up in the form and the document is generated. They need to bring the document, come to India and then they are allowed electronic tourist visa on arrival. So that is it. It becomes very helpful. So this can also be added to infrastructure as a freedom of travel, ease of access to coming to India and good international policies. This is known as good visa regime to invite more and more international tourists to India. Probably that is one of the reasons that we've had 14.5 million international visits in the year 2018, wherein almost 190,000 crores of foreign exchange has come to India. And we do not talk this as infrastructure, though it is a part, a very much a part of tourist infrastructure. The more a resident community takes pride in the improvement of its community, the greater will be the strength of its tourism product. Like I just gave you an example of electronic tourist visa on arrival, which is a case of improvement of India as a tourism community. And we have provided great strength to tourism product for the people who are coming to India. Infrastructure can be defined as the policies and relationships that move barriers or obstacles to free travel like visas, passports, currency, language, international connections, information and promotion, and prejudices related to race, religion, and gender. Infrastructure also includes water, electricity, sewage disposal, gas, and other social facilities and institutions that improve the quality of life like construction, education, training and many more. So infrastructure can be said as to be a soft infrastructure and hard infrastructure. Soft infrastructure includes the facilities, the visas, the passports and so on. And hard infrastructure includes the facilities, the amenities to be offered to the tourists coming to a particular place including your water, electricity, sewage disposal, gas, right? And all those things which are related to the brick and mortar infrastructure as such. So hence we can divide infrastructure into number one, technical, example, the heat, the gas, etc. Then social, example, education, culture, etc. Now coming to the topic of infrastructure and tourism, first thing I must tell you all that we do not have anything which is called tourism infrastructure because every infrastructure which is created for tourism is most widely used by the local population of that particular place. But still there are certain infrastructure activities which are considered only for tourism like number one commercial infrastructure which includes your hotels your restaurants or gastronomy and your tourist arrival servicing including your visas on arrivals and so on. Then comes the public infrastructure that includes the roads on which you commute, the communal army, the trails and lastly we have the mix that is which is a mixture of public infrastructure as well as commercial infrastructure that includes information and accompanying. Now we are going to discuss the various elements of tourism structure that is the things that comprise and make a tourism infrastructure. Typically the tourist infrastructure would include number one the accommodation facilities which includes hotels, bed and breakfast scheme, accommodation, supplementary accommodation, 
होम स्टेज और एनी अदर टाइप ऑफ अकोमोडेशन वेयर इन द टूरिस्ट कैन कम एंड स्टे देन कम्स अदर फैसिलिटीज फॉर अराइवल सर्विसिंग लाइक द फैसिलिटीज ऑफ वीजा एंड अराइवल देन कम्स टूरिस्ट इन्फॉर्मेशन इन्फॉर्मेशन बिकम्स अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट फॉर द ओवरऑल एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ द टूरिस्ट एट अ पर्टिकुलर प्लेस If the tourist is not well informed, then he is not going to have a good experience at the destination. And lastly, we have the trails, which are also part of your tourist infrastructure. Then comes the para tourist infrastructure. It includes transportation facilities like the roads and the transport points, the means of communication in a particular place, the taxis, the metros, the railway network, the road network. and so on then comes local facilities which includes communal and public transport how people can commute to a particular place or inside the local area and what are the various means of public transport that like i just counted upon then comes trade and service facilities including the craft or other means of reaching a particular destination elements which cannot be unequivocally classified are like gastronomy the restaurants the restaurants and the hotel the eating joint the street food all these are part of the tourist infrastructure of a place but they cannot be unequivocally classified hence they are classified as gastronomy then accompanying facilities like sports leisure culture and entertainment in today's world like india is famous as a cultural tourist destination so whatever the culture things are taking place at a tourist spot whatever means of entertainment are there whatever activities of leisure passing on times are there whatever sports activities or sport arenas are there they are all classified as part of your tourism infrastructure now we'll try to understand through this pictorial graph or rather figure how tourism product is divided and where and what is the role of the tourist infrastructure so tourism product basically can be divided into two categories one is the man made and then the other one is the natural one then if we take a tourism destination as a tourism product then we include tourist facilities and devices and we include tourist services now tourist facilities and devices may have tourist virtues and tourist services will include the tourism infrastructure as such which includes accommodations gastronomy transportation informational cultural recreational sporting trading and the local infrastructure then we have commercial infrastructure which includes your hotels outlets for food and beverages then modes of transportation and trade services and it also includes various public and commercial which are like sports and recreational facilities cultural facilities information facilities then we have purely public which are like transportation system the trails and the communal facilities for transportation at a particular place so all these things club together with the transport and the tourism infrastructure are there to facilitate the tourist this will lead to a good or a bad experience of the tourist at a particular place so we can say infrastructure is a great complementary thing to tourism without infrastructure tourism cannot be practiced and tourists cannot have a good experience at a particular place now we come to a position we are rather in a position where we can differentiate and we can define the relationship between infrastructure and tourism tourism infrastructure is the basis of tourism development and utilization of existing tourism resources tourism infrastructure includes a large number of services necessary to meet the needs of the tourists and increase satisfaction during their stay at the destination For successful tourism development the need for more intensive investment in modernization infrastructure is increasingly appearing as a necessary condition for example the government of india has been emphasizing a lot on the development of infrastructure for the promotion of tourism like we have started cruise ship angaria angaria is the first cruise made in india and it's an indian company so we have started this cruise as a part of successful tourism development and modernization of the infrastructure we've also started a cruise from varanasi so waterways can be used as a infrastructure to give a better feel to the tourists then higher level of tourism infrastructure development can contribute to increased efficiency of production and distribution of tourism services and in some cases such as remote destinations increase supply of tourism services one example i would like to quote here is the example of the scheme called udan that is ude desh ka aam nagrik Now we've had three phases of this scheme, wherein almost 150 plus destinations have been added. The tier two and tier three cities are connected by air, 
with the smaller aircrafts like ATRs and Bombardier C-55 and these cities are now connected with the Tier 1 cities. So now all Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities are connected with the major airports of the country. And now under this scheme of Udan, we've got 150 plus places being added to the kitty of air connected tourist spots. So like we've got airport in Sikkim recently being opened. So now we can cut down on five hours or six hours of road journey from Siliguri to reach Sikkim. And now we can have a flight say from Delhi to Kolkata and then Kolkata to Sikkim. So we save almost a day of traveling to reach the particular destination. So tourism will be increased in supply in Sikkim areas because now more and more people will go there with the onset of the airport, more hotels will be coming up, more infrastructure of taxi and roads will be developed because there the supply of tourists will be more and hence it will lead to the overall development of infrastructure in the state of Sikkim. This is just one example, this example can be replicated and is replicated to other parts of the country as well. For the existence on the tourism market, which is becoming more dynamic and demanding, the question of improving competitiveness becomes crucial. Earlier, we had very poor connectivity to the northeastern states of the country, and now every state has an airport. Some states have more than one airport, and so they are competing amongst themselves to bring in and to fetch in more and more tourists. So days are not very far off when each state of Northeast will be a competitor to each other to attract tourists to its home state. In this regard, the investment in the development of tourism infrastructure is becoming an important component of tourism competitiveness. The greater the infrastructure at a particular place, the greater the state or the place is in competition to others. So with greater infrastructure, destinations will have greater competitive edge as compared to their competitors. The importance of tourism infrastructure is reflected in the fact that it can contribute to increasing the efficiency of production and distribution of tourism services and in some cases such as remote destinations even increase the supply of tourism services. The remotest of the places of India if connected with air can now be developed and attract tourists. For example, we have now a new Union Territory of Ladakh and the Leh Airport is supposed to be I mean, increased, expanded, so more and more tourists will be coming to that area. And if we are able to develop another airport in say Kargil area, that will take care of the northern part of Ladakh as well as the northern part of the Union Territory of JNK. So just development of one particular airport at a particular destination can lead to an increased activity of tourists coming into a particular place and that will in case have a offshot and an increasing development of other infrastructure as such. Lots and lots of tourism adventure companies will come up in that area. Lots and lots of taxes will come up in the area. The roads have to be increased and widened to take care of the increasing number of tourists. Hotels will increase, people get more and more employment. The supplies have to be increased, people will again get more and more unemployment. And so this the entire area will be developed only because of the increase in tourism infrastructure. For tourists to be able to reach some tourist destination, there should be the developed transport infrastructure, which is a precondition for consuming other tourism services of the destination itself. For example, I would like to quote an example over here of the new upcoming airport at Jevar, which is in Greater Noida in the Gautam Buddha Nagar of Uttar Pradesh. When completed, this airport of Jaywar will be the largest in the entire country with having at least six airstrips to its own. First two airstrips will be starting by the year 2023. Now imagine how development of one tourist infrastructure that is the development of an airport can have an entire city developed on its own because an airport is coming up in that area. Now it will also create a lot of employment opportunities, a lot of development activities in that particular area. Now if we start off first of all we need land to develop the airport. So land is basically bought at much higher rates than the market rate and at least one person from a family is promised to get a job so the people who are the owners of land are benefited they get better prices and one person is promised to get a job and they also get at least 10 percent of the land developed as commercial land in return of the land that they give for the development of the airport so it's a win-win situation for the farmers as well now take another case after getting the land for the development 
we require lots of people who are into designing who are into landscaping architects designers they will design the airport so all these people will get job because of the development of one infrastructure of tourism that is the airport now after the designing part it is the actual construction of the airport that will take place for that the industries like cement bricks steel industry the jcb the heavy equipment industries all these industries will get benefit and they will create employment just because of one activity of tourism infrastructure development that is building up of an airport so it's an offshoot it's a chain reaction and this chain reaction will create employment and will also create a supply mechanism and a demand for a lot of other products which we do not assign directly to tourism like a cement industry getting benefit because of infrastructure development in tourism is never assigned to tourism industry though it is being benefited because we are developing one tourism related infrastructure so we see a lot of services will be required a lot of products will be required to cater to the demands of creating one tourism infrastructure that is development of an airport so lots and lots of things will be required the demands will be created in those industries will be requiring lots of automobiles to come up uh, to cater to this demand and we see that one tourism infrastructure related activity creates a demand for so many things which normally are not assigned to tourism development or development related to tourism infrastructure now imagine the scenario when the airport is ready right so we'll be requiring air conditioners we'll be requiring housekeeping staff we'll be requiring people to manage the cargoes we'll be requiring people to manage the counters we'll be requiring people to manage the maintenance repairs and overhauling facilities so all these infrastructure will be created because of just one infrastructure of tourism that is the development of an airport and thousands and thousands and lakhs of jobs will be created because of one infrastructure of tourism that is the airport now jaipur is say approximately 80 85 kilometers from the main city of delhi so we'll be requiring roads to reach the airport we'll be requiring metro services to reach the airport we'll be requiring metro service connection between igi and jaipur so again lakhs of crores of rupees will be spent on developing this infrastructure which again will create all the things which will created because of the development of the jaipur airport thousands of taxis will be required thousands and thousands of hotel rooms will be required because more and more traffic will be coming through this airport lots and lots of hotels will be required lots and lots of restaurants will be required ancillary services will be required people who are working at jaipur airport or places related to jaipur airport they will require the basic amenities and hence an entire parallel economy will be created because of the development of one tourism infrastructure project this is how tourism development or infrastructure development of tourism creates so much of development for a particular city that it is unparalleled no other industry can develop so much of infrastructure which a tourism infrastructure can develop for a city now you've got the roads to reach there then what happens you require taxis so companies like mahindras and tatas will and marutis will be benefited because people will be buying their taxis so that they can fetch tourists to and fro from the airport airport itself will require hundreds and thousands of people to cater to the aircrafts coming in and going the people coming in and going so again a parallel economy near the airport will be created it will develop into a city which will be having a center as the hub will be the airport so airport infrastructure will become the hub for the development of the entire city so in future we can say 5 years or 10 years down the line we'll see jaipur coming up as, as a major city in the ncr area just because of the development of one tourism infrastructure that is the airport now this is the power of tourism infrastructure development how it can create so much of jobs how it can create so much of opportunities for allied industries for ancillary industries even industry which we do not imagine are benefited by tourism are actually benefited by tourism infrastructure development thus we see that the issue of ownership of tourism infrastructure which is an integral element of tourism supply chain depends on the part observed infrastructure in the area of tourism is based largely on the investment coming from the private sector and which share reaches around 78% of the total investment in tourism according to tourism and transport forum 2012 social infrastructure is financed mainly from the private sector while environmental infrastructure belongs to the state and includes public goods transport infrastructure is mostly owned by the state and it is directly responsible for investment in this area as well as development The formation of tourism infrastructure substantially contributes to increasing the complexity of the tourism phenomena which affects the increase in functional complexity and territorial destination competitiveness. Today, 
enhancing the construction of tourism infrastructure concerns a large number of countries wishing to achieve higher tourism results and its significant impact on economic development generating the effects of the overall development is conditioned by the way of managing the relationship between tourism infrastructure tourism and the local economy it follows then that both the state and public enterprises and the private sector are responsible for the quality of infrastructure planning the sustainable development of tourism infrastructure in line with this requires overall development of basic infrastructure and facilities along with all tourism facilities in a balanced way smith points out that the level of development and functional use of tourism infrastructure and lack thereof in the vicinity of tourist destination and it are obstacles that can really affect the experience and satisfaction of tourists in the respect of a certain tourist destination After a visit to a tourism destination tourism infrastructure has an important role in the tourist's overall experience and impression regarding a specific destination general infrastructure of the destination and services provided represent one of the most important factors of overall tourism development thus infrastructure cannot be provided by the traditional or conventional business firm in plan economies the distinction between the public state sector and the conventional firm is not as crucial as in market economies this is because profit and non profit organizations are given different roles in market economies whereas in planned economy maximization of the social value of production is given greater emphasis in a country like india which has seen the increase in equality in distribution of wealth resources and development since independence it is natural that the quality of the infrastructure for all sectors of the economy is very uneven but i am happy to say that in the last couple of decades the development of infrastructure of india has been at the international levels we can see in delhi that immigration has swelled and the population has gone beyond the carrying capacity of the infrastructure so it's not just the tourism infrastructure it's the local infrastructure as well which needs to be taken care of So in this situation the strength of the tourism infrastructure has to be created independently and at a great cost it is for this reason that the national action plan and the subsequent tourism policies assert that in the process of development it is the government that is going to provide the infrastructure while the private business firms is going to provide services like accommodation and transport etc thus the government will invest in these sectors and the rest will be given by the private sector the government and the public sector investments will be in the area of infrastructure while the private sector investment will be to increase accommodation and air capacity so to sum up in today's session we have learned about what is infrastructure what are the various intricacies to infrastructure development what is tourism infrastructure and the relationship between tourism infrastructure development and tourism experience thank you so much